Oh, fuck, it's horse beef, baby. And today I'm bringing you a video about KSI. Oh, I know what you're thinking. What like, what are you talking about KSI for? Like, is, is this horse beef MMA? It's like, I, guess what? Shut the fuck up. I don't really give a shit. It's my channel. I will speak on what I want. And KSI is a millionaire, potentially billionaire crypto scammer. Therefore, it's free game. It's open season on his ass. And he's had a boxing career, quote unquote. So I would like to re-explore it for the express purpose of shitting on him because I believe that among anybody else on YouTube besides Mr. Beast and Logan Paul, KSI is the most deserving figure out there of being absolutely clowned on as his reaction to, to recent tweets, I swear from like, what was it, Dan TDM or whatever? I don't know, I never watched him personally, but I know he is a bit of an OG in the YouTube scene. Made a little tweet that, that ruffled some feathers. KSI, Logan Paul, and Mr. Beast, mainly KSI and Logan Paul, proceed to go on a bit of a uh, damage control spree. I don't know if it's damage control really, because rather than controlling the damage, they've actually uh, exacerbated the issue and made themselves look like uh, complete knobs so uh, like i said we're gonna we're gonna stay away from from all of the the lunchly shit i don't really care about I don't, I don't really care about box lunches for kids i understand it's not it's not healthy and they are falsely advertising their product as being unhealthy alternative listen i don't really care about that shit and i'll leave it to my boy sewer king to clown ksi for that particular issue but what i do care about is KSI's fraudulent boxing career. So let's just jump into it right now, shall we? And it all started with KSI versus Joe Weller. In fact, I think there was one fight before they got it on, but this was like the first one that was actually put on pay-per-view, you know what I mean? And, and sold to the public and pretty much started this entire wave of influencer boxing. Uh, it was a pretty good fight. And to, to be honest, it's the only boxing fight in the history of KSI's quote-unquote boxing career where he actually displayed boxing he fought behind his jab and you know he looked like shit for the most part but fortunately for him on the night Joe Weller looked even shittier and he prevailed unfortunately setting off this delusional timeline where KSI and his fans act like this dude is worth half of a hair on my ball sack as a boxer but on the bright side we did get a nice little rivalry between ksi and logan paul uh, which made for some incredibly incredibly cringy moments that i'm extremely grateful for to be honest with you guys Ah, oh, now that was Logan Paul's entrance to the first ever press conference leading up to their first ever fight. And can you please point me to a more cringeworthy entrance at a press conference? Because I cannot think of it personally. This dude like speed walked over to KSI so he can get in his face at the exact right moment at the beat drop. So he can have his moment, I suppose. But it ends up being just so, for lack of a better word, fucking gay in all honesty. Okay. I've made a severe and continuous lack of my judgment. Alright, so not only does KSI screw up the quote, right? It's a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment, I believe, but he says lack of my judgment. Of course, you'd expect nothing else from KSI, but it seems like he doesn't really have a problem when Logan takes the wig off. It's when he goes for the bandana and tries to reveal the xenomorph skull of, of KSI. That's when he has an issue and he starts freaking out, and it's absolutely hilarious. Now, here's a formal warning. Please brace yourself for one of the toughest things to watch that you will ever witness in your lifetime, guaranteed. Wow, that face is so sadistic. Like, get the fuck out of here. Now, when we get into the actual fight, from what I remember and, I, and, and after watching some clips, Logan Paul was by far the better boxer on the day, piecing up 
KSI had a pretty quick jab as well and showed some pretty good boxing fundamentals and was just boxing the bleeding head off KSI, right? He really was for the majority of the fight until he gassed out and then KSI's uh, windmill punches ended up uh, snagging a couple rounds and then somehow this fight ends up being scored a draw despite Logan doing enough, you would think, in the earlier rounds to secure the victory. But the fight was scored a draw, and KSI's farce as a boxer could continue to go on from here into the rematch with Logan Paul. So let's get into that one now. But in this fight, there's actually a big tone shift from KSI, where he starts to actually drink his own Kool-Aid and believe that he is a proper boxer and tries to prove it by testing Logan Paul's trivial boxing knowledge. I don't know if I want to say that. Because <laughs> you don't know. I'm going to try to laugh. Like <laughs> now, even though Logan Paul is no better than KSI, I have to give him credit there. That is the one and only time I've ever thought that anything coming out of Logan Paul's mouth or any action of his was actually palatable and quite funny. So just quick little side note here. That was honestly funny and a pretty spot on impression of KSI's fucking retarded laugh. Literally have said nothing relating to boxing. Does that is that your game plan? Just your game plan I is mean, that you like, hope I don't know anything. Well, I mean, say something. Well, I mean, say well, something. Say something that you've worked on. Forty divided by four. You got this one. You can do this one. Ted, you happy? You happy? Yeah, you happy? You happy? You got what you wanted. You happy? <laughs> Unreal. I can't wait for tomorrow. <laughs> Man, watching these clips back reminded me of just how cringe inducing ksi is can somehow prop up logan paul and make him seem like a half likable dude and charismatic dude you know what i mean it's it's, it's just crazy how ksi can just uplift everyone around him just by being as as awful to listen to as he is and it's going to be amazing i commend your confidence i dm you that why do you think i'm confident have you seen my team Stitch Duran. I have Larry it. Wade. Do you know who he's trained? Do you know who Larry Wade is trained? Your team trained? ain't here. Do you know who Larry Wade is trained? Where's Jeff? You don't know. You don't know. I don't know. That's why you I'm don't asking. Know. Do you know who Sean Porter Where's is? Where's Jeff? You don't know who Sean Porter is. Do you know Luis Ortiz? Do you think because I don't know? You don't know, know anything know? about boxing, bro. That's you don't know. Again, is this that is why people get fucking pissed off. This is why, I'm bro. snapping again. Because, no, no. It's because you're making this a fucking mockery. You know what I mean? Boxing fanatics are like this is bullshit huh? so ksi's ego is so large that rather than being quietly confident letting his actions speak for themselves because deep down he knows that once he gets in that ring all training will go out the window and he'll revert back to his stupid looking windmill punches but he decides that he needs to qualify himself to logan paul by getting frustrated and then listing off his his training partners and sparring partners as if that makes any sort of a difference and logan paul just writing it off in in, in his face increasingly making ksi more and more uh frustrated as a result and if there's one good thing that logan paul has ever done in his entire life it is making ksi look like a fool in the build-up to both of their fights not that ksi really needed much help with that to begin with home uh, what pace at what pace, like, how do you measure pace in a boxing match? Like, quick, oh, moderate, my intermediate? God. Oh, my God. Okay, Go, no, yeah, I want to know. Like, worry, miles per hour? Don't worry. Don't worry. Help me. I love KSI's condescending attitude. Just acts like he knows something that no one else knows. Like, this man has discovered the formula of how to measure the pace of a boxing match. Like, it's, it's an obviously snarky and sarcastic question from Logan Paul, but... Uh, the reaction from KSI just shows the low IQ because he takes it completely seriously and just makes himself look like a fool because he takes himself too seriously as if we are not able to see what is what, man. We can't call a spade a spade when we watch KSI Box. We know exactly what we're watching. We're watching an amateur go at it and get paid millions of dollars for it. But all the fame, the fortune, the notoriety built up KSI as this larger-than-life figure in his own head. And I think that this has just been a slow but steady decline mentally for KSI. And this fight, I think, spelled the beginning of all that. Understand the question. Don't worry. <laughs> so help me understand. That's how much you know about boxing. Vidal. <laughs> help me understand what is the unit of measurement for pace in a boxing match. Five times five. This one's easy. So after all of this from KSI, right? 
the the extreme confidence that 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 he was projecting, right? Talking about boxing knowledge, you don't know anything about boxing. Testing Logan Paul on his on his trivial boxing knowledge, right? Just to go out there and look like this. Now, if I can give KSI one compliment, it's that this man is tenacious and he has almost an unmatched will to win. Unfortunately, though, his technique and his actual boxing ability does not match up to it. And it, it definitely doesn't match up to uh, his lips and what the fuck he, he says about himself, the way he talks himself up. To then show up and look like that, it makes no sense and it just makes him look like a bit of a joke. Yet, after this one, he gets his arm raised. And then, as I said after the first Logan Paul fight, dude, the charade continued and continued and continued. But I also would like to brush over the next few fights in KSI's boxing career because uh, he partnered with DAZN. They formed DAZN X Series. And uh, the big headliner, KSI, is fighting two fighters in one night. A professional boxer. And then it comes out to be just some random Mexican journeyman who didn't even look like remotely close to the weight class of KSI on the night. Looked like the much smaller man and proved himself to be a journeyman on the night as well but god bless pineda um i know he came from very little and uh, seized the moment and has done quite well for himself since fighting ksi so i would say of of everything that was the best thing to come from uh, from ksi's boxing career is helping out a humble man like like that pineda guy so god bless him but swarms like never fought a day in his life looked terrible and we're supposed to be impressed that he finished two guys and one night oh my god you can line up 10 dudes who never fought in their entire lives and someone with remotely any training could knock those guys out one by one by one. But we're supposed to be impressed that KSI did it twice in a night. I don't really understand it. Those those dudes should have never been in a ring to begin with. Maybe Pineda, right? But as I said, he is literally in existence to lose two guys like KSI. And it's just not really impressive. And then he went on to fight this phase temper dude who just got chinned by, I think it was... Was it slim in his last fight and then makes a quick turnaround after getting knocked out really badly? And then we're supposed to be impressed that KSI knocked him out too? Really? We're supposed to be impressed by that? Like why Why is KSI not fighting the best guys available in the Zone X series? Instead, he's fed easy matchup after easy matchup after easy matchup. And it is a joke. And for people to continue with this narrative that, oh, KSI is the best thing since sliced bread. This is the best in all of YouTube boxing. He would beat Jake Paul, no problem. Jake Paul, you can say what you want about him. Jake Paul is infinitely more talented as a boxer than KSI. Always has been and still is. And if that fight eventually does happen, KSI is fucked, I must say. I felt like I'm about to go to a funeral, but... Your boy's obviously going to have to do a business, a business deal. And actually, I have a quick business deal for you, right? Uh -oh. Should I, should I move? Finally. All right, so, oh, brother, oh, I got, I got some money in here, bro. We got, we got bands. We got a thousand dollars, a thousand dollars, bro, in ones. Cause I know how much you like, you know, going to strip clubs and all of that, you know, spending and all that. He, he didn't, so I got he didn't a deal for you. No I, got, you said I got a deal for you, all right? So obviously, when I knock you out, your club, Bonbonnier, whatever the fuck it's called, keep is going to be worth less than $1,000. So I'm making a pro proposition for you right now. $1,000 for your club, bro. There, there truly is nothing like listening to KSI stumble and bumble his way through a pre-rehearsed line just for the punchline to not hit at all and just leave the crowd nervously laughing, if anything, to try and deflect from how 
uncomfortable they are by the whole situation. He looks, he looks great. He looks fantastic. He, oh, I got other punches did, as well. He did the cover of Men's I can health. hit you with uppercut. So he's fit. Left and hook, he's right shape. hook. I can make you dance for me, bro. He's, he's, he's fit and he's in shape, but at the end of the day, all he's going to do is run around. And then you get another example, man, which KSI, he just says too much. Oh, man, oh, oh, no, no. I got more punches. I got right hook. I got left hook. I got uppercut. Oh, come on. Come on, fam, in it. Like this, telegraphing around. I ain't going to run around. I'm going to be chasing you. I'm be hunting you, bro. Yeah. Well, you yeah. keep doing that. That's what I want you to do. Mm. That's that's the plan. That's mm. what I want you and to do. And when I hit you, you're going to be surprised. You're going to be like, oh, shit, this, and he, this and guy he, got he, power. He hits, and he hits hard for a beginner. Oh, I hit so hard, bro. That's just what it is. I'm like, so Thor. That's why it's free money. We get it, KSI. You're the biggest puncher in, in the history, but just leave that up to your performance. There's no need to over-explain, man. It just seems like a desperate attempt to convince everybody that what they're looking at isn't what they're looking at. You know what I mean? Like anyone who understands boxing, watches you box and understands that there's no real skill or ability involved. It's just a bunch of hubris bullshit on display from KSI every single time he hops on the mic. And that's really all you get from him because every time he steps in in the ring, do you, do you ever get to witness what what he promises? I guess, yeah, he, he did knock out that that Tommy dude in the first round. But then again, who hasn't knocked him out at this point in YouTube boxing? Hasn't like everyone knocked out Tommy in YouTube boxing? I don't understand what the fuck I'm supposed to see in KSI. Very uh, wary with you. Yeah, but I've never been knocked down in sparring. I, I believe so. I believe so. Because you've never been, been sparring, sparring for sparring. two years. Oh, mate, I've never been knocked down in sparring. Yeah, as Joe Fournier said, you've been sparring for like two years. It kind of makes sense. And you brag a lot about being in there with, with high-level sparring partners, but all this says to me is that they're not actually testing you or putting it on you as much as they should. So it's really no point to brag that you've never been knocked down in sparring. I just take that as you're just not being pushed. Bro, you saw what I did to Tempa and I was ill. You're talking about the world champion of, like, fucking Call of Duty. You beat him up. Congratulations. It's like me going up to some like two year old, slapping him in the face, feeling hard. But, like, what are you talking about? At two weeks' notice, if you couldn't knock him out, you shouldn't even box for fun, let alone talking about knocking me out, man. You're like super delusional, but it's okay to be scared. Okay. And what's yeah. going to happen is, I'm going to thank you for the opportunity after I knock mm -hmm. you out. I'm and that's how easy it is to shut down a loud mouth imbecile like KSI. You just have to string words together in a coherent fashion. That's pretty much it. I'm gonna be extremely humble. If, how do you, if, how did you even spot, like train for me? Well, how did you even train for me? I got as there's no one I, that fights like I got as many uncoordinated, no superly in shape fighters that can only throw a right hand from the ankle. And I said, Do you want a hundred dollars to spar me? I went around and then there we go. And then and I what, had like 50 KSI show up. I don't, I don't think I've ever heard a more accurate description of KSI's boxing style than what we just heard from Joe Fournier right there. That was beautiful. And now, in case you're unaware of how this fight went down, this was the result. KSI had knocked out Joe Fournier uh, in this one, right? I believe it was in, like, the second round or something after Joe had actually had had some success in the second, I believe, after just re-watching that second round as well. Joe was actually starting to catch KSI in that second round. He hurts Joe clearly with a, with a big looping right hand, closes the distance, and then KOs him flat. But upon the first replay that I that I saw, I knew right away that it was an elbow. The commentators have the replay of the elbow. The the commission, everyone in that building can see that it was clearly an illegal blow. Yet KSI is still awarded the victory nonetheless, even though everyone can see what happened. And the fact that Joe Fournier had to go and appeal that loss for it to be overturned is crazy. And I think speaks volumes to the fraudulent nature of KSI's boxing career clearly the zone X series just wanted to keep KSI winning that they were willing to further ruin the credibility of boxing as a sport because there is no way in hell that under under any legitimate organization that, that win would not be overturned on the spot with the clear replay of a foul elbow and then he proceeded to clinch me. And at that point, I tried to step back and come through with a hook. And as soon as I came with the hook, while he was falling towards me, I then saw him drop on the floor. So now in my opinion, right, there are only two explanations for how you could have possibly landed with your elbow in that instance, right? Because if you look at the trajectory of that shot, it didn't even look 
like KSI was trying to throw a hook that looked like he was trying to hit him with an elbow. Either that or you have no idea how to box, right? It's it's one of those two things, right? Either either you were intentionally trying to land with your elbow or you just don't know how to throw a tight right hook. Either answer is valid for me, but to me, the trajectory of that shot, it does not look like how a hook looks especially if he's closing the distance like that that should guarantee that you land with your glove to an even greater extent but the fact that you still were able to land with the elbow so if he was even further away so if he didn't close the distance at that exact time right then then you would have actually landed even cleaner with your elbow than with your glove so this makes no sense and to me like i understand that joe fournier claimed that that he believes it was intentional i'm not saying that it was intentional for sure but as I said, man, two options. You, you don't know how to throw a tight right hook or you were trying to elbow him because that did not look like a hook t- to me, right? I don't know about you, but to me, that looked close to being an intentional elbow. So it's a weird one because for me, I truly believe I hit him with a right hook, but the replay is saying otherwise. You truly believe something, but the replay is saying otherwise. So in other words, you hit him with your elbow. Now look, he's trying to clinch me. Look, he's coming forward towards me notice how he's coming forward towards me i'm trying to throw a right hook a quick right hook on the inside like it's fast like one of them ones like a sneaky right hook now for him to say that i intentionally tried to use my elbow it's just outrageous like i would need to do it like that i don't even know like him like that if anything that's even harder to do but that pretty much is exactly how you threw the shot. So it makes no sense. It looks like an intentional elbow. Am I crazy? Like, I understand that KSI was winning the fight technically, right? But leading up to that moment, Joe was having success, like I said. But I'm not saying that he did it guaranteed, right? Like, a guaranteed thing that he, he meant to do it. Of course, I could never say either way it goes. But KSI's rationale behind it, like he's trying to see, you see he's closing the distance on me. Yes, as I said earlier. That should guarantee that you land with your glove. And as I said earlier, if he wasn't as close to you, that would have been a straight up elbow, man. Because he was closing the distance, you just managed to land with your forearm and not and not the tip of your elbow. Otherwise, you may have actually landed with the tip of your elbow and this would have looked even worse for you. So you're actually lucky that he closed the distance at, at that exact time because at least now you have an alibi, I suppose, because you didn't land completely with your elbow and it was more of the forearm more than anything. But I digress and I would like to move on to the finale, KSI's very last boxing match. And it could be his very last boxing match of all time, really, just considering how he's handled the loss. Um, things, aren't looking, things aren't looking up for KSI, really, but I would like to cover some of the trash talk leading into the fight first before getting into the result and the, uh, the subsequent uh, childish antics from KSI. I've been looking at some of your sparring partners, okay? Uh, Owen Kirk. Owen Kirk, middleweight. Pretty ass. I- Damn, KSI revealing himself to be a little bit more ditty than we may have thought of, saying he's got a pretty ass, dude. What the fuck? Uh-huh. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm trying to imitate Mike Wazowski. Obviously, because, you know, Tommy, you look like that. Well, uh, do you want me to put the mask on, huh? Somebody stop me! <laughs> Dickhead. Oh, shut up. Okay, man, like, the failure to deliver that Mike Wazowski joke is just so cringe-inducing. Like, there, there surely has to be a point where you just snatch the mic from KSI and stop him from causing further damage to himself and his own X-Series. Look at me when I'm fucking talking to you. Fuck you, cunt. prick. How's that? Illuminous green. Shut the fuck, fuck up. Fuck you. You are not You should ready be stuck on a traffic light somewhere, mate. Huh? Come on. You fucking idiot. Yeah, deal with Shut it. Shut the fuck I'm up. I'm ready to go, Listen, bitch. Listen, at the end of the day, your manager knows what's uh-huh. going to happen. You know what's going to happen. So as funny as that line is from Tommy Fury, right? You look like you should be stuck in a traffic light somewhere because he's wearing green. But then KSI's response, I don't know if you picked that up, but he says, I'm ready to go, bitch. If KSI meant that, if he meant that as a dad joke as it came out to me that may have been the most clever thing that ksi has ever said in his entire life it it doesn't say a lot believe me and i'm giving him too much credit for it because it's just genuinely surprising for an ounce of wit to come out of ksi's mouth but if that's what he meant by it i have to give him credit because that 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 is a top tier dad joke 
A lot I'm smaller. a fast guy. Fast Let powerful. me tell you now. I'm All my fast. powers in the legs. I'm powerful. You don't do leg day. I can see. And you do leg day? Yes, all the time. Please. Too oh, fucking God. Save me from this. Save me from this trash talk, man. I wish I never decided to make this video because now I have to rewatch all these bullshit lines from KSI. It's just insane. It's, it, it, it's insane. Like the fact that anyone can, can think that this is in any way good trash talk. Man, it is beyond me. But Jake Paul's a bigger man and can hit no, harder. He, no, he doesn't. Yes, what do you mean Jake Paul is harder than me? Who have you knocked out? Are you Who have you knocked out? Who have you knocked out? I've knocked out uh, Temper. Who's, I don't even know who's, who's Temper. Face Temper. I don't know who that I've is. I've knocked him out. I don't know who Face Temper is. Okay, I've knocked Fournier with my f***ing forearm. Fournier? I didn't even get my to mother, hit him with my, my fist. Could be like, do I even need to comment on that from KSI there? That's just next level delusion to, to even flex that win over Fournier by saying, I didn't even get to hit him with my fist. Yeah, that's, that's exactly why landing with the non-padded parts of your body is illegal. KSI, isn't that a crazy concept to grasp? Like, what the fuck? Six rounds, catch weight as well. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you was gonna do that as well. <laughs> so KSI tries to make Tommy Fury flinch by reaching for his prime bottle. He gets no reaction and then proceeds to laugh as if he somehow punked Tommy Fury in that instance. What the fuck? some point you have to take away a point 100%. how many more warnings i think he has to take away a point right now this has to be it they're gonna do it he absolutely is and that's huge in a six round fight that's a so there isn't really much to talk about when it comes to the actual fight because it was terrible it was pretty much Tommy Fury trying to get his jab off and set up other shots, which he could never do. He could never even time the uppercut against KSI, despite him darting in every single time with the exact same right hand with his with his head fucking pointing towards the ground. Every single time he was open for an uppercut, and Tommy Fury couldn't even find a single one. So I don't think that, that KSI doing better than expected in this fight comes down to his skill it comes down to tactics darting right hand and then clinch and then complain about back the headshots as you just saw and uh had a point taken off from tommy fury but let's see ksi do the exact same thing a few seconds later but not even the commentary want to call it out right Just blatant back of the head shots that Tommy Fury doesn't complain about. The commentary doesn't call out. They can like all they know how to say is KSI while he's blatantly throwing rabbit punches at Tommy Fury and hard rabbit punches as well in the clinch. But of course, no consequences for the Golden Boy of the Zone X series, right? So without showing you the fight in its entirety, really, I feel like this picture right here on screen pretty much perfectly sums up the entirety of that fight. It was right hand from KSI, as I said, clinch or Tommy Fury, double jab, KSI ducks under and then they go into a clinch. But for the most part, if you were paying attention to the fight, a lot of the combinations were being landed by Tommy. He was landing higher volume. KSI literally, just as Joe Fournier analyzed him as, he threw a right hand from his ankles. The... The, the whole fight, right? Bouncing up and down with his weird jumping jack style that he stole from Michael Venom Page, darting him with the right hand, and that's all he had. When he couldn't land the right hand, all he could do was clinch and hold on for dear life. Anyone saying that KSI was impressive in this fight because he did better than, than, than you thought he would, he didn't even attempt to box Tommy Fury. At least Jake Paul attempted to box Tommy Fury, a professional boxer, and prove himself in that regard. After that robbery, it's a robbery, bro. How many jabs did he land? How many jabs did you land? You didn't get any, hardly any shots off. Um, and you got a point off as well. I'll tell you one thing. I'll tell you one thing. He can land two right hands around, but I was pushing the pace. I was throwing the shots, and I was the one put. You weren't landing. You weren't landing. You weren't landing. Look at your face. Look at your eyes. Look at you. Look at you. Have you ever seen someone take? a loss as poorly as KSI just did right after the fact, after delivering the performance that he delivered, like surely he was present enough in that fight to understand that all he was doing was throwing right hands and clinching, right? And that he actually was being pieced up for the majority of that fight, not to the extent that Tommy should have been able to piece him up considering the massive skill difference. So in that regard, right, Tommy Fury should be very ashamed of his performance because he did not fight nearly as well as he probably should have. 
He's on paper. But KSI did nothing to actually win a boxing match. He just spammed right hands and blitzes, and that's really it, and missed a good majority of them. This level of delusion is next level. He has a weak mentality. He's a sore loser. He's a crybaby. And this, I think, spelled the downfall of KSI as we know it. Before he won it, it was a loss because he said he was going to knock out. Control it, control it, KSI, come on. He's obviously very upset, and I understand why he's very upset. KSI shocked a lot of people. I think he was a plus 300 underdog going into this fight. Then you will get the rematch, and you'll no, win the I rematch. Just, do you want that I rematch? I don't, I don't, I don't. I hate losing. We've all been there, my friend. It's all part Harry, of it. And as you see there, directly after the fight, KSI throws a tantrum. And of course, you have Ariel Helwani saying, Oh, yeah, KSI is very upset. And I understand why he's very upset. Yeah, Ariel, yeah, is that right? You're just really that desperate to keep your job with the zone, eh? You fucking chill. I've been my biggest hater, <laughs> Jake Paul, uh, before the announcement was made, thought I won the fight. So for the judges to label me as the loser, it just made no sense. So Jake Paul says that you should have won the fight. I don't even think he explicitly said that. But even if he did, like, right, let's let's say that Jake Paul said that KSI was robbed here. Just because he's your enemy, that suddenly means that his opinion is the only opinion that matters. And that you being labeled, quote unquote, the loser makes no sense now as a result. What if he... What if he came out and said that Tommy clearly won the fight? Would you have changed your mind as a result? Probably not. So this point makes zero sense to me. Because of this appeal that we made, I wanted to try and right what was wrong. Me and my team put up a case uh, to the PBA to explain why I didn't lose that fight. From Tommy Fury hitting me repeatedly in the back of the head to me outlanding him three of the six rounds of the fight and also the point deduction, etc. I was just waiting for the result of the appeal. But it seemed uh, <laughs> to be taking way longer than I thought it would. Now, the funniest outcome of this appeal from KSI is that the majority decision for Tommy Fury was actually changed to a unanimous decision. So pretty much these, these, these judges took an extra look at the fight and realized, hey, you know what, we actually got a few of these rounds wrong and Tommy unanimously just took the fight, which is exactly how anyone with half a brain watched the fight and, and came to the conclusion of. So just that blowing up in KSI's face is just the funniest thing I've ever seen. Very lucky to get past two rounds. Well, I did. <laughs> Congratulations, I suppose. What are we taking consolation prizes that you got past the second round, even though you were the one saying you were going to knock him out? So I guess what happened there, right? And you needed the judges to save you. That's pretty embarrassing, bro. The judges really did save him in the end by awarding him the winner, I guess. Is that is that what judges do? Do judges save people? I guess if your name is Sean O'Malley and you're fighting against Peter Yan, the judges do in fact save you, but that's that's uh, that's that's beside the point. And to be honest, Tommy Fury has been pretty embarrassing these past few weeks. From him being with Chris Brown, having zero rhythm, <laughs> looking hella awkward, to him attempting to dance with Dion Wayne, to whatever this clip is, all while Molly May is looking after his kid at home. I mean, come on, Tommy. You're, you're a father now. You can't be constantly partying in the club while your missus is taking care of your child. You were hardly around during Molly May's pregnancy, and it seems that even after the child has been born, you're hardly around. What a pathetic cope from KSI, really. And who are you to say anything about fathers being around when you could have been a father, except your children, God knows how many of those, are no longer around if you catch my drift. Plus, another thing I find hilarious is whenever I come across Tommy's posts on like Instagram or Twitter, the comments are just slewing him <laughs> and saying that he lost the fight. And that's because he did. <laughs> I, I don't care if three random people thought you won. KSI's IQ is so low that he doesn't realize the fact that he is basing his opinion on him being robbed in that fight off of the opinions of literally random people who have no say in the matter and saying that he doesn't care about three random people saying that he lost the fight. Those three random people are the only ones who actually matter when it comes to scoring the fight KSI. So they're not actually random people in this scenario. All the people that you're citing as saying that you won the fight are the random people. You dumbass. The world knows that you ain't shit. This guy, this nerdy FIFA player, managed to hang with you. <laughs> 
And that, quite frankly, says a lot about your legacy. So yeah, let's keep reminding Tommy that he didn't win that fight under his Instagram post or Twitter post or anything he posts online. And if you see him publicly, you, you could berate him as well <laughs> and remind him that he didn't win. <laughs> Wow, what a great dude inciting his entire fan base to harass Tommy Fury when they see him in public and harassing him on his social media pages. Like, are you that delusional? To where you don't understand how that makes you look. That makes you look like such a piece of shit. And as time has passed by, you've only gone on to reaffirm these beliefs about you, KSI. Well, that pretty much sums up my thoughts on KSI's boxing career. Wanted to do a little retrospective uh, since everyone's going after KSI and I've always been waiting for a reason to go after KSI because I am a petty son of a bitch and I just am not a fan of the dude. I think he's super arrogant, super unlikable and just genuinely an annoying person. But I didn't want to attack him for the Lunchly thing because everyone's been doing that. Um, but anyway, if you did appreciate what I've done in this video, if you appreciate the vitriol towards KSI, although I'm not inciting anyone to go harass him, he's already getting more than enough of that really associating himself with logan paul and mr beast can't wrap my head around that really but his reaction to some of the backlash he's been getting recently i think is uh is showing some chinks in his armor and uh, he's going just full mask off at this point and revealing himself to be a bit of a twat so anyway guys i appreciate you watching and i'll see you on the next one